Curtis James Jackson III, popularly known as 50 Cents, was born in Queensboro, New York City, and raised by his mother, Sabrina, in the South Jamaican community. Sabrina, a drug dealer, raised Jackson until she was killed in a tragic fire when Jackson was eight. After his mother's demise, his grandmother raised Jackson. Jackson had boyhood aspirations to be a boxer and fought at the junior level, but when he was 12, he began selling drugs. Curtis was arrested at age 18 for selling four vials of cocaine to an undercover police officer on June 29, 1994. Three weeks later, he was charged again when authorities raided his house and discovered heroin, 10 ounces of crack cocaine, and a starting pistol. While sentenced to three to nine years in jail, Curtis was spending six months in a boot camp and receiving his GED. Curtis never used drug himself. As a symbol for transition, Curtis adopted the name 50 Cents. The name was inspired by a Brooklyn robber called Kelvin Martin. Jackson started rapping in the basement of a friend where he used turntables to record over instruments. In 1996, a friend introduced him to Ron DMC's Jam Master J, who founded Jam Master J Records. J showed him how to count lines, write choruses, compose music, and make records. He lauded Jam Master J for enhancing his ability to compose hooks, and J produced the first unreleased album for Jackson. After Jackson left Jam Master J in 1999, he was signed to Columbia Records by the platinum selling producer Trackmasters. They sent him to an upstate studio in New York where within two weeks, he recorded 36 songs. 18 were included in his 2000 release, Power of the Dollar. Jackson and former G-Unit member Bank M. Smoth founded Hollow Point Entertainment. Following the successful controversial underground single, How to Rob, which he wrote in a half-hour car ride to a studio, the rapper's popularity began to grow. Though How to Rob was supposed to be released with Toglov with Destiny's Child, Curtis was shot and hospitalized two days before he was scheduled to shoot the music video Toglov. An assailant walked up with a 9mm pistol and fired 9 shots at Curtis at close range. Curtis was shot both legs, chest and left cheek, in the hand, arm and hip. His facial wound culminated in a swollen lip, loss of wisdom tooth and a mildly slurred voice. His friend was wounded in the hand. They were both admitted to hospital where Curtis stayed 13 days. Three weeks later, the alleged attacker, Daryl Boom, a close friend and bodyguard of Mike Tyson, was killed. Jackson used the walker for six weeks and after five months, he completely recovered. He was living with his girlfriend and son in the Poconos when he left the hospital and his fitness routine helped him grow with muscular physique. Jackson reached a recording deal with Columbia Records at the hospital before being blacklisted by the music industry owing to his Ghetto Koran album. Unable to work in a studio in the United States, he moved to Canada and released over 30 songs with business associate Shamoni XL. Jackson's fame increased and in 2002, he launched the mixtape, Guess Who's Back. He then released 50 Cent Is The Future, backed by G-Unit. Their efforts soon paid off when Eminem and Dr. Dre, who had 50 Cent's Guess Who's Back mixtape in 2002, signed him jointly to their labels Shady Records and Aftermath Entertainment. In February 2003, 50 Cent released his debut album, Get Rich or Die Trying, described by all music as possibly the most hyped debut album for a rap artist in about a decade. He debuted on the Billboard 200 to number one, selling 872,000 copies in its first four days. Within a week, the lead track in the club set a billboard record to be the most listened to song in radio history. Get Rich or Die Trying was followed in 2005 by another hit album, The Massacre, on which 50 Cent continued to rap about drugs, crime and sex on the tracks like Candy Shop and Just a Little Bit. The album sold 1.15 million copies in its first four days and was number one for six weeks on Billboard 200. During the same week, he became the first solo artist with three songs 
and top five of Billboard with Candy Shop, Disco Inferno, and How We Do. The rap genius launched his label G Unit Records in 2003, signing Lord Banks and Young Buck into the G Unit group on the 2004 album Beg for Mercy, which sold over 5 million copies worldwide. Subsequent releases by 50 Cent, like Curtis in 2007 and Before I Self Destruct in 2009, achieved only small sales. But the personal history of 50 Cent as a convicted criminal and a drug crime and poverty survivor had established his place as an influential figure in the hip-hop culture by then. Curtis debuted on the Billboard 200 at number 2, selling 691,000 copies in its first week. Upon the release of the album Animal Ambition in 2014, 50 Cent retained a foothold in the industry though reviews were not especially warm and it sold only over 100,000 copies far from his glory days. Ongoing feuds with rap lords like Jaru, Rick Ross, and The Game took his eyes off the game. Jackson effectively spread his brand to other markets following in the footsteps of hip-hop moguls like Dre and Jay-Z. He invested in a vitamin water, a partnership that allegedly netted him $100 million when the company was sold to Coca-Cola in 2007 and also founded the popular SMS audio headphones line. Jackson applied to the US Patent and Trademark Office in 2002 to license the word 50 cents as a trademark for clothing, sound recording, and live performances. The request was released in 2003 and registration was issued in 2004. In 2014, Jackson became a minority shareholder in FN Vodka, a vodka brand made in Netherlands when he invested an undisclosed sum in the company Sire Spirit LLC. In December 2014, Jackson signed a $78 million contract with the luxury underwear brand Frigo Revolution Wear. Jackson was interested in the feuds of mining and precious metals. He visited a block of South African platinum, palladium and iridium mine shafts in 2008. He met South African billionaire Patrice Motsepe in talks about buying an equity interest in the mine. On July 21, 2012, when Jackson founded his new company TMT, The Money Team, he became a licensed boxing promoter, licensed to advertise in New York. He was in the process of being licensed in Nevada, where the majority of big fights took place in the United States. Jackson launched a philanthropic initiative in July 2011 to provide food for a billion hungry people in Africa by 2016, joining Pure Growth Partners to introduce Street King. Jackson's forays into film and television have also found success. Since 2014, he has worked in the crime drama Power as an executive producer and supporting player. In 2013's Escape Plan and its two sequels, Jackson also landed a prominent role alongside Sylvester Stallone and starred in the movie Spy in 2015, South Paw in 2015 and Den of Thieves in 2018. Jackson's legal and financial issues began mounting after Ross's girlfriend Lastonia Levinson sued him for posting a sex tape online without her permission. In July 2015, a jury found Jackson responsible for damages amounting to $7 million. That and another case involving the Slick Audio Headphone Company caused the rapper businessman to apply for a Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. In 2016, the bankruptcy court ordered Jackson to pay his creditors $23 million over five years, but after only months, he paid it off, helped by a settlement in his favor from a case of legal malpractice. That same year, he eventually sold his luxurious Farmington, Connecticut estate, which had been on the market for years at a modest price of $8 million. Initially, he had bought the home from Mike Tyson in 2003. At the family front, Jackson's girlfriend, Shaniqua Tompkins, gave birth to a son, Marquis Jackson, on October 13, 1996. Tompkins later sued him for $50 million, but the suit was dismissed. On September 1, 2012, Jackson dated model Daphne Joy and had his second son, Sarah Jackson, with her. Although Jackson has numerous songs that refer to drug and alcohol use, he does not drink alcohol or do drugs. 
citing a bad experience with alcohol as his main reason. His rags to riches story that entailed crime, drugs, and jail gives his music a gangsterism touch that sets him apart from other rappers. Thank you very much for watching our videos. We'd like to give you another exciting video for you to enjoy next. Still, before then, our team will be thrilled if you can like this video and share it with your friends on social media. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss other exciting videos like this. Look at your screen now to see two other videos we handpicked for you to enjoy next. We love you.